Well, I'm delighted to say business and economics editor Liam Halligan is here uh, with me. Liam, it's been quite the day. Uh, we knew that the markets were pricing in uh, the corporation tax decision, which we've just heard from the Prime Minister. But that has a huge impact on businesses right across the country because they would have been planning in a different way for it. Uh, amidst the political drama, Arlene, I, I was careful to make the point, and Alistair very graciously let me make the point, uh, that for, for tens of thousands of small businesses across the country... This political parlour game has led to a disastrous outcome. They were relying on corporation tax staying where it was at 19%. Instead, it's going up to 25%. Yeah. Small businesses in particular in this country operate on very, very tight margins. And they just had 6% wiped off their bottom line, which in many cases is their entire profit that their family live off yeah. and which they reinvest in. And coming out of the back of COVID lockdown, which, of course hammered many small businesses. It wasn't the big supermarkets closed down, was it? It was the corner yeah. shops yeah. closed down. Many you know, fast food restaurants, family-run businesses. There will be a lot of very, very worried people tonight. So I think we should make that point here on GB News loud and clear because I don't think it's a good idea that corporation tax is about to go up from one of the lowest in the uh, OECD advanced countries here in the UK to one of the highest. Yeah. And you will know, Liam, um, my next door neighbour in the Republic of Ireland sets corporation tax at 12.5%. Yeah. And yeah. they do that for a reason. It brings in lots of foreign direct investment. Yeah. And, and they've been very successful. And they've been hugely successful. And, I mean, we in Northern Ireland uh, at one point in time wanted to have that parity, if you yeah. like. Uh, and we spent a long time arguing for that because we believed that a low rate of corporation tax would bring growth. And you're about to have a rate of corporation tax, Arlene, and I say this as somebody who really wants Northern Ireland to prosper, as, mm. as you know, that's double what it is in the Republic of Ireland. Correct. Which Correct. is a real deal-breaker if you're thinking. You want to invest on the island of Ireland. There's so many good reasons, a vibrant people, very great levels of education in both... Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, we can both agree. And yet in one part of the island of Ireland, obviously mm. a separate country, the rate of corporation tax is double what it is in the other. And the other thing I wanted to say on this kind of um, economic and business theme amidst the political drama, which we're rightly covering, is that I've been saying throughout um, the afternoon that the real story isn't just what's happening in Downing Street and the, and the, 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 the theatrics of various people taking high offices of state and mm. being deposed and so on. The real story in terms of financial stability is in the bond markets mm -hmm. uh, because today is also the day now the Chancellor has gone and the Prime Minister has retreated from some of her mm -hmm. um, tax policies. Um, the bond markets also want to see the Bank of England carrying on with its emergency measures to support the market for government debt, the so-called 10-year Guilt market. A guilt is just another name for a government bond. When yeah. you lend the government money, you get a bit of paper called a guilt that pays you a rate of interest and then you get your, your money back. Now, I'm looking at this. It doesn't make pretty reading. It's moving all the time. But in the last hour or so, the 10-year guilt yield has gone up quite a lot. Um, and so I'm concerned that the market is now pushing to see if the Bank of England is going to really end that emergency support or if they're going to come back in and try and get that guilt yield back under control because that is the borrowing cost, Arlene, mm. that is the benchmark for all other borrowing costs across the economy, whether you're remortgaging, whether you're going to get a personal loan, whether you're a company that's taken out finance in order to buy some new machinery, build a new factory or whatever it is. So... Mm. I'm the last person in the world, and I know you are, to not be interested in politics. How, yeah. ir how ironic is that? Yeah. But we have to keep an eye on what this means for the broader country and, in particular, uh, the business community. And it's interesting you say that because, of course, uh, some people will see the new Chancellor as someone who has been put in there to settle the markets down. Um, now, Jeremy Hunt, as we all know, avid Remainer, um, someone who argued very heavily for lockdown um, and somebody who's seen as a globalist as well, uh, very much so. Do you think he will settle the markets down? Um, not if him being there leads to more parliamentary and political pyrotechnics to, yes. use, yeah. to use. And I think he will be an incendiary figure. Yeah. 
I, I say that as somebody who, who knows Jeremy Hunt, respects him. He's a very successful businessman. He's an extremely accomplished man. Um, but he is not, you know, a person who unifies the Conservative Party by any means. I mean, let's just think about the, you know, you, 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 you know more about Parliament. You, you've forgotten more about Parliament <laughs> than I'll ever know, Arlene. But let, let, let me just make this observation, which won't be lost on you. It was the European Research Group, uh, the Eurosceptic part of the Conservative Party, who put Liz Truss in office, basically. Yeah. They, are, they are a big block that operate in Parliament. People like Steve Baker, who's now Minister, of course, in the Northern Ireland office. People like John Redwood. Marc Francois. Marc People Francois. Like a, yeah. lot, a lot of GB News viewers and listeners will be familiar with these characters and admire them to some degree. They, they crowned Liz Truss. Yeah. She is Prime Minister because of them. And she's now, and, and Kwasi Kwarteng is indeed, was, was a Brexiteer mm -hmm. uh, as, as well. Liz Truss, in a moment of kind of desperation <laughs> to try and stabilise the ship, have just gone, he, they've just got, she's just appointed to the second most powerful position in this country's p political class, their nemesis, yeah. Jeremy Hunt, who was as near to the sort of Lib Dems and the Labour Party sort of reversing Brexit, if possible, mm -hmm. as it was possible to be within the Conservative Party, very much from that wing. And I really do fear, uh, you know, Alan Duncan, um, early on, former MP, former yeah. minister, he accused people of Brexit, sort of McCarthyism, Brexiteers always saying that everything that Remainers do is about wanting to try and reverse Brexit. I do think a lot of the Parliamentary Party mm. will start to get concerned that Jeremy Hunt will use this very powerful position to try and pick apart the settled will on on Brexit. And you know, that, that sounds crazy to me, but it, does, it, it wouldn't be surprising to me if many members of the ERG, people I know quite well and I know you do, were thinking along those lines. So hopefully Jeremy Hunt will settle the ship. I certainly want him to. We're all sick and tired of yeah. this turbulence. But I worry that politically he's actually going to be potentially quite destabilising. And um, I have to say as well, Liam, um, for people like the ERG who thought that they were moving in a particular direction, it looks as if some senior people within the Conservative Party have lobbied to get Jeremy Hunt into this position. Um, what does that say about Liz Truss's uh, moving forward now and her growth strategy that she wants to promote? I think for that sort of sort of one nation Tory reform group branch of the Conservative Party, the kind of soft left of the Conservative Party, the kind of people who, in a rather derogatory fashion, Margaret Thatcher in the early 80s would have called wets yes. rather than dries. I think for that part of the Conservative Party, an extremely respectable, uh, legitimate part of the Conservative tradition, mm. that kind of one, neighbor, one nation Toryism, I think for them this is about planting a massive flag a big tank on Liz Truss's lawn, if yeah, you like, yeah. moving their queen deep into Liz Truss's territory, to use a chess analogy. Yeah. And again, that's why I think it could be quite destabilising. And it strikes me that behind the scenes, Liz Truss was actually quite desperate. She had to cede a lot of ground within her own party. And to, to drill down into your question, Arlene, what does it mean for her growth strategy? Well, it strikes me that... Quite a bit of her growth strategy is still left, certainly on the tax side. The big planks of it were to uh, um, lower the national rate of national insurance, yes. which Rishi Sunak increased. That's the really big ticket mm. item. That's tens of billions of pounds. That's staying. Mm. Also, she hasn't conceded yet, but she hasn't conceded um, on lowering the basic rate of income tax from 20 to 19% mm -hmm. next year rather than the year after, mm -hmm. which Rishi Sunak wanted to do. Again, that's a big ticket item. That's sort of seven or eight billion pounds. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there's the energy price cap, which will cost lots of money. So she's lost two parts, yeah. the top rate of tax and then the corporation tax freeze, which are the most eye-catching parts. But in terms of you know, the money and the arithmetic, most of her tax measures are still in place. Now, the, the, real, the real, really important part of her growth strategy for me is what we call the supply side policies, trying to make the planning system more efficient, mm. trying to get rid of some regulations which biz business, big businesses like because they stymie small businesses. Sure. That, this kind of stuff is very, very contentious politically. It's very, very difficult to get through Parliament. And that's the part of the growth strategy I fear for yeah. because you need parliamentary strength 
to get that business through. I don't think Labour's going to do her any favours yeah. at all, yeah. and certainly not the Lib Dems. So I think we may already have reached the peak in terms of her growth strategy with her hanging on to some of her tax policies because the more nitty-gritty legislation to try and make the economy move more quickly and more commercially friendly, I think she will really, really struggle now, yeah. given the ground that she ceded by making Jeremy Hunt, no less, her Chancellor. The great survivor, as I call him. He's back again. He is. He's got to add it to him. <laughs>